from a much cooler variant of the edge of Austin. You are a skipping stone moving across a beautiful lake. And it's going to be a great night. And now in this universe, here are your totally normal hosts, Brian Brushwood and Cargill. Just Jared like it's Mitch. always been. <laughs> You're totally normal, yeah. Uh, not for nothing, but like old schoolers will remember the very first incarnation before the BB Live show, before NSFW, there was you and me uh, in the middle of like a hailstorm uh, 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 doing the uh, 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 mind control is the only phrase I re- remember from it. Do, uh, uh, you remember this, yes, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Wildly, okay. yes. Finally, finally, a return to form. Uh, your the original hosts. <laughs> we're we're crushing it. Uh, R.I.P. Justin. Uh, uh, Bryce. Hi, hello. Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday. Yeah, it's a great night day. Oh my we goodness, have, it's gonna be a great. We night. have a few things to discuss. Uh, what what's number one on our list? We do have a few topics to discuss. Here's one. Uh, here's one for you. Bum bum bum. Suicide Squad. Uh, the new the new movie is out, everybody. Folks, they made another one of these. How do we feel about it? Is it a sequel? It's a is I think it is. It it is, is absolutely it a... a sequel. It is the Suicide Squad. Yes. Sequel right. to Suicide Squad. And it is a sequel. It does include many of the same characters. It does tie into the DCEU. And it is rad. Uh so how did everybody experience it? Uh, I watched it at home. I watched it half on my TV, half on my laptop. All right, done count. <laughs> uh, I I uh, I did as we've been doing for all the big releases this summer. We went into the backyard. We set up the projector and the screen. <gasps> we kicked it on the, the back patio. Had uh, some beers and watched uh, watched Suicide Squad. Bootleg the piracy. Suicide Squad. Got it. All right. Uh, what about you, Brett? Well, I didn't really do it. I mean, big screen at home, best friend, kicking it. Uh. Didn't pause. Did not pause. Watched Am I literally the only one who went to the movie theater like a chump and, and had a pizza and a beer well, you and watched the movie? Had, why like a chump? You're not a chump. You just did it differently. I mean, you just did not... it differently in a very dangerous time in a very dangerous city in a very dangerous state. That's Absolutely. All. No, what's dangerous is to watch it at home when you got a bunch of kids who are trying on for the first time their heckler bits. And they're all awful. Spoiler That's, alert. That that is true. That is true. Um, I do just have a puppy, and he was quiet through the whole movie. Uh, also, you have some younger children that this film was not appropriate for. That's never stopped Brian before. That was no, no, no. But there was there was actually a story <laughs> about that where someone wasn't paying attention. They're like, "Oh, it's the new DC movie, and it has Harley in it. We'll take the whole family, ranging from nine to eighteen. You know, family and, friendly Harley Quinn. And then you get that nice opening sequence where. Not so many people, uh, you know, yes. end up with faces at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, 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 how do we rate this on our rating scale? Also, real quick, let's make up a rating scale. What, what, is, what about five stars out of five, five suicides? Stars? Out of five yeah. suicides? How many suicides? Five bullets. Um, <laughs> I would say four out of five suicides. I would say uh, five self-harms. Uh, five self harms. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Five minor cuts. No, no, I, <laughs> yeah. no that tracks. This is this is literally my favorite uh, narrative film that I've seen this year. Like it is, it might be my favorite movie that I've seen this year. But I need wow. to watch it a few more times. I, I my favorite movie of the year is the Sparks Brothers Edgar Wright's documentary on the on Sparks, which is phenomenal, and it's the best thing I've seen all year. But I had so much fun with this that I'm like, well, I haven't seen another narrative feature this year that I love as much as this. I know it's not technically a movie, but as far as narrative features, how would you stack this up against Ted Lasso? Um, oh, dude, I just heard, I, I heard even, all of y'all. Even, I heard all of y'all different. stuck into First breath. of all, Ted Lasso's the best thing on television. Yeah. Uh, Right, narrative thing this year. No, 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 but I said narrative feature. Like, feature has a specific context. In fact, in order to be officially Hollywood. a feature... Hollywood. Hollywood Cargo, he doesn't care about that. He wants to He wants to play apples and oranges. 75 minutes. Think? 75 minutes is the bare minimum for a feature. Oh, I didn't and know that. It, Yeah, 
75 minutes. That's why if you ever watch a movie that's just about 75 or 76 minutes and the credits seem to go really slow, it's because they were uh, trying to milk out that extra time so that they could qualify for theatrical release. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. But I do love Ted Lasso. And, you know, don't make me pick my children. I'm not going to ask you which one of your children is your favorite. Yeah. We already know. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's Penny it's like by a lot. Tasso. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, where do you where do you put Ted Lasso versus Suicide Squad? Who's on top? Uh oh, Ted Lasso by yeah. a mile. I mean, it's so yeah. good. It, it 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 fails to fail ever. How great what, how great was it that we got a new Ted Lasso and the Suicide Squad on the same fucking day? Yeah, that was, that was that a fun. Was, that was a good day. It hey, was man. a really cool. like, I've been excited about that day. day all summer. I was just like, no matter what happens, there is a day, and we're gonna get Ted Lasso and Suicide Squad same day. I'm in. What's funny is I'm like, where's the part where you mentioned that my kids were there for neither? Like, like <laughs> <laughs> because it matters. It matters how you experience the movie. You know, it was wonderful watching it without your kids. I will say that. Yeah, I also agree. It was fun watching it without the Brushwood children. <laughs> You're not wrong, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I really adored the film. It's it's the right tongue in tongue in cheek nature. It's exactly what you want out of a James Gunn movie. It's it's the most violent superhero movie I've seen. Like it it's uh. it's up there with Deadpool, but I think it's more violent than Deadpool. Right? Do you think that that's that, that is wrong? I, I think when it comes to superhero shows, Invincible is way more violent. Oh, I'm than... talking about I'm talking about films. We're we're going back to films. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I'm specifically sticking with films because films and television are two very different beasts True. that play by very different rules, True. especially when it comes to streamers. Um, you know, streaming movies don't have to get rated by the MPAA, and the MPAA has actual clergy sitting on it. Like, there's actual pastors and priests who actually decide what are part of the the process to decide what these ratings are. Ah. So you have to make choices while making your movie that may or may not impact their decision whereas something like invincible they uh, tv ratings uh, are voluntary so they just go ah, it's tvm and then they can put whatever they want in it do so, you know what religion these uh, clergy are christian okay all right yep i, I was gonna say get a boost on there let's see what he says i will back <laughs> play of of like uh, uh invincible is truly extraordinary it's 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 fantastic um I mean, because the thing is, is the boys is really violent as well. Mm -hmm. But there's literal scenes of heroes without faces, like chunks of head. And we go in, we see people who have been cut apart by helicopter blades. Mm. There's some there's some pretty there's some pretty high end gore in this, uh, which was made for me. That's if, the thing is if 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 we're going to make a distinction, I will say that a um, uh, uh, Part of the delight of Invincible is that it managed to hit the same amount of horror as the boys without complicated things to explain to my adolescent daughters. Yeah. Okay. Really? The subway scene? You can explain that? No, I'm talking about the little person who runs and oh, dives see. into a vagina and all oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. It's, it's, it's more grotesque and more uh, whatever. Sure. All yeah. right. Right here. I really like the two <laughs> uh, You guys want to do another topic here? Yeah, Ready. Sure. All right. How about this one? Scariest movie ever made. Now, who, who here would know a thing or two about scary movies? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> this is a complicated topic. Uh, <laughs> so, last summer, Forbes magazine published an article that uh, was about the scariest movie ever made and that they had a scientific the study. Uh, the Exorcist was part of the 50 movies they chose. They yeah. chose the 50 scariest and movies And they all time. decided on The Exorcist. On Sinister. Um, my Ooh. movie, Sinister... Haven't, haven't heard of it. Yeah, no, no, no. Not a lot of people have seen it. Ethan Hawke's in it. It's, uh, it's, it's all right. Um, but no, they, they named Sinister. And so, of course, as you would expect, like what just happened, the internet had opinions <laughs> right fair enough fair enough now fair it's, enough. it's interesting how they did it they did the they did what was the biggest scare and the biggest scare came from insidious uh and what was the the scariest movie and over duration the highest level of average heartbeat was for sinister and Ooh. so um so they rated us oh, as this is like by science yes by yeah. science and i man it's 
it's a weird thing to wake up and have an email box full of that. Um, because what was great was, you know, j the conversation was what mattered. Like, do I think Sinister is the scariest movie ever made? I don't. But um, I know several people who saw it as. Which was scarier to you? That moment or waking up and finding a bunch of emails from Kevin Smith? <laughs> <laughs> I never got an email from Kevin Smith. Um, okay. uh, I did, however, get some tweets from Kevin Smith. Uh, now, you know what? That <laughs> moment, that moment was a a drop. Your 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 heart drops into your stomach. Where uh, uh, this happened? God, this is a decade ago. Um, I had, in fact, I think literally a decade ago. I believe it was August of like 2011. No, it was 2010. Uh, but 11 years ago. But yeah, it was. Um, I had been asked to write an article about his social media use. And I was a little stern on it where I was because I was a big fan and I was like, you know what? What makes Kevin Smith movies Kevin Smith movies is Kevin being injected into it. But now that we're getting Kevin Smith every day, he's making his own movies irrelevant. Like the jokes, all the A material that would have gone into one of his films is now going into social media and he's not going to be left with anything to, to work with. And, 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 and if I remember correctly, at the time, uh, the headline that was picked not by you, but by somebody else was basically uh here's why kevin smith is now ir irrelevant or whatever yeah, that is exactly which, is, which yeah. is not what you intended to say and he he wake and baked and read that and then went on twitter and his two million two point three million followers he wrote got, a novel he wrote a novel and kicked me in the balls all day and blocked me <laughs> um uh back when it was like why would you block me i'm not even following you like it was this far back um ultimately what happened was he uh um uh had a screening of Red State that was going to happen in his house. He was going to invite 50 bloggers. And someone said, ha, 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 you should invite Master Worm to that. And he said, I'll invite him any day. Yeah, he's welcome to come. Uh, the ball's in his court. Uh, and I, I, I was just like, uh, yeah, I got to go do that. And then it got the venue got moved, and then it got moved again, and it turned into just a regular screening. It wasn't at his house or anything. But we ended up, at the end, I walked up, and I said, hey, Kevin, uh, I'm Cargill. I write as Master Worm. And he goes, oh. Oh, you're one of the guys I yelled at, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, yeah, I do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was and like, can we hug it out? And he's like, of course we can hug it out. Oh, we hugged it out. We didn't don't, do don't, don't blow over the best part part of this, which was you said, hug it out. Yeah. Like, 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 like. That's how I know that uh, 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 we were meant to be friends. Yes. Is, is the, like, yes. Yeah. No, we hugged it out. <laughs> We've been on good terms ever since. Like, he's a good dude. He he likes my movies. So. You know, the fact that a guy who inspired me to make movies likes my movies, it's pretty great. And the fact that people had this weird discussion surrounding that, that uh, uh, for some people it's the scariest movie ever made, I think that's awesome. Uh, for me, it's still going to be Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, that's the movie that fucked me up the most as a kid and that I, I'm haunted by. I think, uh, maybe I'm misremembering, but I, I think you said it was the best movie he had made. Uh, and and if you did say that, I'm not saying you did, but but if you did, I definitely agree with it. Like Red State was phenomenal. I really like Red State. No, no, no. I don't think it's the best movie he ever made, but I do think it's a really, really great review. Uh, yeah, no. In fact, as they're showing, yeah, there's my review of Red State, and sure enough, as a response, Kevin Smith tweeted about it and says. This is, this is how a professional film critic acts. I slagged him. He had every right to destroy my movie, and instead he treated it fairly and enjoyed it, and I thought it was a great review. Thank you. And yeah, so yeah, he, he's a good dude. He was just, you know, and I get it. I have, I have friends online that get high, and they get baked and decide to tweet, <laughs> and, uh, and they don't always tweet the smartest and sanest stuff. He was also going through a difficult time as far as, like, divorcing himself from the traditional... Uh, distribution of uh, chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and he had. I mean, what really he was in a difficult time because he made his worst movie. Uh, um, uh, God, what's it called? Cop. Uh, no, oh, uh, 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 cop. Uh, yeah, cop it, out. Cop, cop out. out. Cop out. And and it was just and it, and he had a tough time making that movie and the movie was poorly received and he lashed out at critics which he later regretted mm -hmm. and I was literally tasked with writing about his social media use. And the the fallout after that whole debacle, and so it was all about that. And uh, they had asked me to write it because they knew I was the biggest Kevin Smith fan there. So they're like, "This is the fairest response we're going to get." And so uh, that didn't sit well with Kevin. If, if if I remember correctly, the version you told to me was basically like, uh, uh, "The boss said, give me fifty words, uh, 
saying how this is the end of his relevancy or whatever. No, no, no. It was literally, it was just give, give us 500,000 words on uh, his social media use and the fallout after the critic debacle uh, over Cop Out. Because it was, Cop Out was coming out on DVD. This was back in the day when uh, digital media was much more formalized and it was much less meaning because it wasn't being driven by social media at this point. It was still being driven by you went to a website on that day and read the news. And so they would tie in news stories. And so the, the Cop Out DVD was coming out. So they wanted an article that talked about that again because they knew people were still interested in that whole thing. And it tied in. And so they got to tell the... The company, hey, we talked about the DVD release and put up an, a big piece and also getting something that people would read that wasn't just a puff piece on a DVD. So where are you at now with the human being, Kevin Smith? Oh, great. No, he's uh, his review of Doctor Strange is one of my favorite. Um, he uh, <laughs> The one where he literally cried saying that he was so he excited. Was, he was baked while like, he did it. No, but like, he, 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 don't take that away. Don't take no, that no. away. He cried yes. with joy yes. upon your render, rendering of it. He watched it in 4D. Um, and he, 5D. Uh, is that what it's called? I don't With know. No, no, no. There, no, no, no. There's an actual. <laughs> there, there are five leads. No, no, no. On... There's, there's actually like he watched in one of those places that they have physical stimuli that go along with the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like you feel like get spritz of rain. You feel. However many of those are plus weed. Yes. Yeah. Plus weed, <laughs> and then you get Kevin Smith's reaction, which was, I thought was beautiful. Like the the way he connected with the film, um, and the way he felt about it. Yeah. Look at look at those eyes. Look at that. Like when somebody who slagged you reacts to your art like that. Like that's that, that's the that's the goal, man. That's it's it, it, that's the hope is that you make something that connects with another human being, any human being, let alone someone who you grew up, uh, you know, idolizing. Someone whose work inspired, like when I was go when I was in college, was when Clerks came out. Yeah. And the re oh, the way I heard about it was our teacher was like, "There's this new movie out. It's playing probably for a week at this art house theater. You got to go see it. It's redefining cinema for this decade." And I was like, "All right, Clerks, whatever. I'll go see it." And you know, then the meme in my life was born. So, um, <laughs> you know, I was that guy that owned Ball Rats that that would would swear up and down for years that it was good, really. Um, I so mean, it's actually. Good. You're also right. Yeah, I, I love mall rats. All right. And it's got Stan Lee. How can you not love mall rats? What else we got? Brett uh, told us he wants to be hot Santa. Brett, what what the what is this? Okay. What is hot so, Santa? Uh, do you want me to come out or you want to stay back here? <laughs> I mean, I, I think it requires your, the visual. Your, your okay. identity belongs to you. But yeah, by all <laughs> means, join us. So we 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 had a little pre set up meeting here, and then well, Brett well, told us about this briefly. We yeah we got a mic there on. While he's doing that, I have to point this out. I was I, as somebody who watches the show. Oh yeah. right, it's a real curtain. Actually, that's a curtain. That's not that's not a green screen. Not that is not. We're not standing in front of a green screen. That's a real honest to god fucking curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was. I walked in. I said, "Holy shit, it's a curtain. It's real. <laughs> a real curtain. Oh, it's real." <laughs> we get we get our green screens from. Tom yes, Barrett. green screens are us. Uh, uh, so I was uh, uh, getting ready. Well, what, how did I start the story? Because I'm trying to remember. You were like, I was sitting there judging a bunch of kids, whether yes. they were naughty or nice. That's right. Trying to decide which ones of them I was going to give presents to. And, and we who said, I'm going and, to and, give and, and, cold and to. Both of us were like, Snapping our fingers, we're yeah. like, we're like, like yeah. no, 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 we're about to do great night. The, so, yeah, you're like, no, of, but it's I love, important. I love the idea of a reindeer pulled panel van. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at physical therapy today because, as we know, I'm I'm recovering from things. And yeah. uh, as I'm looking, I said, you know, For sure, example, we're going to work on my shoulder, we're going to do all this, but you know, I really want to. I really want to work on this area, this, this the stomach this, area, the, co the core. Little, you want to work want on your to core. Not be so. And thank you, thank you for the close up. So uh, uh, I, I, she said, "Well, what what are your goals?" And I was like, "Well, I just I kind of want to be a hot Santa." And she was like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "You know, hot Santa. You know the thing, hot Santa." 
And they're like, no, you keep saying those words, but they don't mean anything. I go, you know, I, I'm going to get like that, that short haircut with the gray really kicks out. And then I get a much better look here. And then, and then you know, and then I'm a hot Santa. And, and, and they, they were going, we don't know what the hell you're talking about. I go, look it up. Look it up. Hold on, hold on. Time out. Okay. Where did you get the idea? Of hot sand. <laughs> it's because I need to get a haircut for something I'm going to go do this weekend uh, that I need to have a nice haircut. And as I was looking through the different men's hairstyles and what would work for me, right. there was a dude that looked like a hot Santa. So you went right past Reed Richards. Yeah, no. Right past uh, I'm not, I'm not. Justin Robert Young. Yeah. Right well, past. he's his own gorgeous. There's never, I'm never going to touch that gorgeous. And then you ended up on like hot, hot Santa. Hot Santa. Okay. Hot Santa. Hot Santa. Yeah, hot. No, it's hot Santa. No, I just keep hearing hot Carl, <laughs> but I hear it as <laughs> hot Santa. So please, please, Bryce, tell me you found a picture of hot Santa. Yes. Yeah, so we. This is the image of hot Santa that Brett uh, <laughs> see now there we go now that's a hot santa right you know, there uh, there are a bunch of dudes in chat right now that have <laughs> just had their sexualities questioned all i'm saying is that's a hot santa that right is a there. hot fucking santa i mean number santa. one you've got to age like 10 more years sure but i gotta get started i'm not saying i'm gonna look like hot santa in a week second of all a while you gotta start investing in all of the back catalog of michael jackson's uh, yes, thriller catalog yes yeah yep Right. Oh, hot Santa will thrill her. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes. Well done. Well done. So that's, uh, I'm just saying, I want to be a hot Santa. Okay. I want to be a hot now, Santa. Th now that we're talking about hot Santa. Okay. Have you guys heard <laughs> the alternate reality where there was a different song for Thriller? Yes, I have. <gasps> I have been on this tip for the past week. No, no, no. It's great. Yeah. Uh, what just Starlight? happened? Oh, what just Starlight. Happened? It's, called Starlight. Star it's called Starlight. It's the demo. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, I, I'm seeing like like half the room nodding. The other I half do not is, know. I this am, is amazing. You're about to. We're I'm about. On board we're with about this to, to okay. hop into to, to Rick Sanchez's uh, portal. So we're about to go to another world. So before Quincy Jones joined the Thriller sessions, sure. This is what Thriller. Uh, was gonna be. was gonna be I mean it's still a banger uh, is it and this is uh, I, actually yes. this is a remastered answer, hold on, yes. let me see if I can find the demo version because this actually sounds like thriller the yeah. one I have seen the, oh, this is it, I believe. The, 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 the demo version? That's right. Still slap. Sorry, I didn't know the, the phrase. The mix is pretty different. No, no, no. There's, there's all this great synth going on, because that was what was happening in the era, was everybody was playing around with the Prophet 5. Sure. The Prophet 5. The Prophet 5. And, and so everybody was fucking around and doing crazy shit like that, but then Quincy Jones like pulled back on He's that. Like, let's just... He was like, let's just bring it back. By the way, the thing that Brian is just now realizing, he's like, oh shit, Cargill's a synth nerd? I didn't know Cargill was a fucking synth nerd. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I may be considering forming a band right now. We're, we're going to have to talk later because... I, I hear the title nerd. Starlight is available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I think The weekend is using that now. I think The weekend. Yeah. I think we found where The weekend finds his inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going. Okay, thank you, Brett. <laughs> How do we get to Starlight? Hot Santa. He is a hot Santa. That was a pretty hot, hot Santa. Hot Santa. Hot Santa. Yeah. Hot, hot, I'm not going to lie. Truth be told, hot Santa sounds like one of those things that you tell people don't Google that, and then they do, and are like an Alabama Hot Pocket or, yeah, sure. or a Rusty Trombone. Sure. Where it's like, oh, oh, the hot Santa. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't need to know what the blue waffle is. They're, they're, they're. <laughs> no, chat, do not Google any of that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> my, my, by the way, my favorite uh, phrase for that is uh, Santorum surges in Alabama three-way. So... Uh, <laughs> Yes. Right. Yes. What else we got? <laughs> All right, our final topic for the day, and this will kind of uh, uh, factor into to the game here a bit. I, hold on. I, Gone somebody, profiling. Somebody said, I hate that I know what all of those things are. <laughs>
That is a mind that has spent too much time uh, online. Uh, the original title for the show was Self Loathing, the podcast. <laughs> uh, I need I need some help, and I'm going to commission the Great Night podcast to help me out with this. Yeah. Um, I I think I actually I think we talked about this last week, but I am I am single. I'm out on I'm out on the whoa, prowl. Whoa, 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 so, whoa, whoa, so whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Okay, ready. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think my Tinder profile needs some help. I oh. think my Tinder profile needs a little bit of help. And I have decided that I am going to um, let whoever is the winner of our game today put uh, something in my bio. They can. They will get the top line. They will get Wait, the above the fold on is, my. Is Tinder. today fucking opposite day where it's like you win and you actually get something? It's a yes. variant. It's a today is a variant. That's yes. Right. So okay. you can um, uh, uh, help replace the top the top line here on my profile. I, I replaced it very recently with something very mediocre. Sorry, real quick, Bryce. Hi. Just just to be clear, uh, is that your profile? Uh, uh, no, that was a schwanz. Uh, yeah, that is. Hey, Bonnie, Bonnie, oh. my wife who just walked in. Uh, I got many what good if photos. I, what if I told you that this was Bryce's profile? That's a good photo. Oh. She's laughing. <laughs> She's laughing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> All right. So let's uh, hope I win. <laughs> hey, look, you know what? He's not standing by his pickup truck or holding a fish. Uh, w women are instantly going to go for that. Well, and that's quite, that's not quite the fish that I'm f I fishing for. I think we're going to have to go wait, a different wait. direction. <laughs> and, uh... You need some starlight. Starlight. Starlight today. <laughs> Uh, I have plenty of other good photos of my profile. Everyone, <laughs> shut up! And I like I like that because not a lot of people feel comfortable having a full body shot. Yeah, and I do. And so I'm gonna put that on front. Yeah, I got a good body. So, uh, so that'll be the game. Uh, so start thinking about that. <laughs> oh, 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 it's all ready. I'm gonna be thinking about ready, here on ready, out. ready. Um, before we jump into that, maybe uh, just a reminder to hey, go to Patreon.com/slash/GreatNight and uh, help support this. Cool. Uh, all right, so we got a game today. Uh, our game is, you know what, you love it. Oh, the news that six. News six. It's time for news six. The news that six. That six. <laughs> uh, so if you don't know, if this is your first time, news six is a, a long-running game where uh, I've got six news stories and some uh, pretty, pretty much adjacent. Uh, uh, trivia questions about the subject matter at hand. Uh, Cargo, have you have you ever experienced a new six? I don't think you have. I have not. This is not a game that I've been invited to. Dude, imagine it's 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 ten fifty three p.m. You're about to go to bed. You turn on the television, and somebody <laughs> with a very square chin says, "It's pretty much the news." <laughs> you you lost me at ten fifty three going to bed. Right. Great. So we've got uh, six topics here for you. I'll bring them up on screen. Uh, they are hard to do, fuck it's big, road trunk, swift tea, briefly, and sandwich optional. Uh, so uh, are these our, are these our players here with Brian and, and, and Cargill? Oh, yes. All right. Uh, so Brian, uh, do me a favor and uh, pick... Uh, pick one of our categories here. Ah, I mean, how can I resist hard to do? Hard to do. The best Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> Steven Seagal is hard to do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm aware. I've heard that. I've heard that about him. That he's hard to do. Uh, okay, you so gotta grab him by the ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's too much Hollywood insider sauce for yeah. me. I don't, I don't know. Really I don't know where I'm at on well, that. That's where, you, that's where you draw the line yeah. at sauce. Right. You don't want to grab a bunch of ponytail. Really get a good tug. All right. So uh, hard to do. So today, the Boston Beer Company and PepsiCo announced Hard Mountain Dew, an alcoholic flavored malt beverage. Boston Beer CEO Dave Berwick said Mountain Dew, a one of a kind, multi billion, billion dollar brand, will deliver the excitement and refreshment that drinkers know and love. Question. You might not know that Mountain Dew had its start as a mixer for whiskey in the 1940s and was named after a slang term for Highland Scotch whiskey as well as moonshine. Do you know? Oh, did you did you know that? What's the? Yeah, I did. I did. I, the, no, Mountain Dew started as a mixer. 
Uh, in fact, the original logo is uh, Hillbilly getting due off a leaf. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, question. Uh, do you know what year Mountain Dew was acquired by PepsiCo? We're going to ask everybody uh, here. You're going to guess a year for me. The closest will get a point. Brian, we'll start with you. What year did Mountain Dew get acquired by the PepsiCo Corporation? Hey, how the hey, y'all? It's me, T-Tech Texas. I'm sitting here thinking about Mountain Dew. That's a, from a place that's far away. Uh, 1938. He's going to say 1938. All right. Uh, 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 Before Parker. segregation. Uh, but after the Civil War. Uh, yeah? Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you agreed. No backseas. It's I, me, t Texas. All right, thank you, t -Tacky. He said 1938. All right, Cargill, uh, what year did the PepsiCo company get Mountain Dew? 1971. I'm going to say 1971. You sound confident in that one. I'm really good at that. You've got to do that. You've got to sound confident. Shortly after <laughs> the Vietnam War. They were competing with Fresca. Frustration of all the dead children. <laughs> Actually, it was uh, acquired by Pepsi in 1776 because there ain't no closer thing to freedom than Mountain Dew. <laughs> that, now that one's true now that one's true all right so your answers are 1938 and 1971 the answer we were looking for was 1969 that's a nice. cargill point congrats cargill huh uh, yeah nice. you, you might also not look know. i mean look you know what do you do at four in the morning you're asleep what do i do i drink whiskey and read wikipedia yeah <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Did you also know that Mountain Dew was originally uh, called uh, by slang hillbilly piss? I'm mm -hmm. never going to forget wow. that. Wow. Yeah, no, the, the, the thing about Mountain Dew is that at the time, what we're talking about is we're talking about people. This is just after Prohibition, and people were still making their own because it was cheaper than buying the legal stuff. Oh. And so, but the stuff that they were making wasn't always great. Like a lot of times it was corn whiskey. You know, uh, uh, and uh, so you needed to soften it up with something. You needed to cut it with something. And so they were mixing it with fruit juices. And so someone devised something to mix all this homemade uh, moonshine with. Oh, nice. And then later we came up with this awesome ad campaign where somebody was jungle treeing, like grabbing one rope and going tree. to the other over, over a, 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 a waterfall. Over then the we went into extreme sports. It was a whole <laughs> transition. Yeah. I no fear. Uh, it, going over a waterfall, not extreme enough, apparently, though. Correct. There we go. All right. That's a Cargill point. Congrats, Cargill. Cargill, you're going to pick our next topic for me. Uh, fuck, it's big. He's going to go with fuck, it's big. <laughs> I just want to say that. I'll say it again in case you didn't hear me. Fuck, it's big. All right. It's time for the news six. The news at six. From our friends at Ars Technica, listeners of the Weird Things podcast heard about this one on Friday. SpaceX assembled their Starship and Super Heavy booster for the very first time in what Ars Technica describes as a shot across the bow to the FAA that the next industrial revolution won't involve skyscrapers. It'll be spacecraft. And also that uh, the FAA should, should approve SpaceX flight plans as soon as possible. Question. The rocket is big. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big fucking rocket. Mm -hmm. How tall is the assembled Starship? Uh, in meters, closest without going over winds. In meters, how tall is this assembled starship? Uh, we'll start with Cargill on this one. Cargill. I'm going to say 300 meters. Cargill's going to say 300 I've seen, meters. I've seen the comparisons, but not the stats. All right. Brian, what do you think? I know it is 400 feet, which makes it less than 300 meters. <laughs> so I will say one foot. All right, you'll say one <laughs> foot, which I think is one third of a meter. So I'll put that down here. All right. The answer that we are looking for is 120 meters. That's a Brian point. Yeah! There we go. Yes, uh, this would be the most powerful rocket to ever take off with its 29 rocket engines. Uh, pretty big. All right, Brian, it's your choice. We got uh, four more topics here. We got road trunk, swift tea, briefly, and sandwich optional. Uh, I ain't got a lot of time, so let's go with briefly. All right, briefly. There we go. Here on News 6. And that's the news that's six. Uh, we'll, we'll, 
we'll get through the news part and get to the six pretty quickly on this one. Uh, earlier today, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo resigned after an attorney general report detailed almost a dozen <laughs> sexual harassment cases. That's the news. Okay, the six. Question. New York, before American independence, was a British colony as well as a Dutch colony. They were known as New Netherland uh, with its own history of governors. The first American governor of New York was fourth vice president of the United States, George Clinton, elected in 1777. I love his band. Yeah. <laughs> Very funkadelic. How long? His was parliament was extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. That's yeah, a better you know. joke. <laughs> How long was fourth vice president George Clinton's uh, term as New York governor of the state of New York? Closest without going over will win. How long was he governor? We are going to start with B -B -B Brian on this one. Brian. <clears throat> oh, he's thinking. Nope. Can't think of a pun. Uh... <laughs> Fuck, it's big. <sighs> It depends on what your six definition of a colony months. is. Six months. You're going to say six months. All right. There we go. Cargo. Uh, one year. You're going to say one year. All right. Uh, the answer, confidence. There's, there's a lot of confidence here. Uh, let's see if, if it pays off. Uh, George Clinton. Uh, not that George Clinton, but the <laughs> He's going to funk his one. mother out. <laughs> was governor for... 17 years, almost oh. 18 years, 17 years, 335 days. That's a Cargill point. I'm closer. And <laughs> on the last day, found out it wasn't even his. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. All right, that's, all right, that's a Cargill point. We won the room. That's all I care about. I love getting a point. <laughs> I love getting a point, not even being fucking yeah. close. <laughs> Uh, we are at the halfway point. Brett, have you, have you got the score? Update? I do have the score, Bryce. The score is, uh, Brian, you've got one point. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cargo, you've got two points. Yeah, he dropped a deuce. We don't need to make a big deal about it. <laughs> don't the, mean to take the piss out of you. I took the, took the, I, I took the Browns to the Super Bowl. I took the, dropped the kids off. At the Some school. of us, you know, <laughs> are number one. The others, you know, did number two. And number one at the box office. Ooh. Oh, Ooh, just God, oh my God. damn! All right, I can't even like 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 <laughs> against this. There is no defense. Like I'm just like, what do I even say? <laughs> just just try to walk this way. <laughs> All right, we got three more news is here, and I believe it's going to be Cargill's turn to pick. The ones we've got left are road trunk, Swift tea, and sandwich optional. Uh, sandwich optional. I don't know what that, why that wasn't the first one we picked. All right, sandwich optional here on News 6. All the news that six. And frankly, it's the news that six. Okay. All right. This is from The Verge. Leading man Idris Elba will be joining the 2022 sequel to the live-action Sonic the Hedgehog film. Elba will voice Knuckles the Echidna, the red <laughs> echidna with big knuckles. Question. Per the sidebar of the Sonic News Network wiki, how many English voice actors have voiced Knuckles the Echidna over the years? This list does not include, at this time, Mr. Elba. Closest without going over will win. Does it, does it include Chris Chan? We're looking for uh, official canonical <laughs> voice actors is my that response. That was a joke just for Bruce Not and including Idris Jack. Elba, right? <laughs> so Cargill is going to give his answer first. How many voice actors have voiced Mr. Echidna. I'll say seven. He's going to say seven. Brian. Eight. Going to say eight. Yeah. Oh, we're playing prices right, aren't we? Mm. You are both over. Oh. Over. We're going to take an another ground of guesses. Cargo. Four. Cargo's going to say four. Brian. Tara Strong. <laughs> Always. So your answer is one, and it is specifically <laughs> Tara Strong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. Okay. Let's see here. This is per our friends over at uh, the Sonic News Network Wiki, specifically this nice little sidebar here. Let's count them out for me. Uh, in Sonic Adventure, that's Michael Mc, uh, McGam, Mc, McGarn, Mc, McGarn. There we go. Uh, Ryan Drummond, Scott Dreyer, Dan Green, Travis Willingham, and Dave Mitchell. That's six. And that's a Cargill point. Uh, Travis Willingham. Really? I was one away. It's all the good part from the beginning. 
I was, was right. always right. You were, you were both right there. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got two more here. Brian, it's your pick. We've got uh, Swift T and Road Trunk. Uh, Swift T. Swift T. Oh, good. good guess. Here on New Six. This is from the Seattle Times and EarthSky.org. Cosmic debris from the Swift Tuttle Comet makes up the annual Perseids meteor shower, which will be especially visible in the dawn of August 11th through 13th when the moon is away. You won't need any special equipment, just a large open stretch of the sky. The Perseid uh, meteor... Am I saying that right? Perseid? Perseids. Perseids. No, Persid. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. The, Persid. We're both wrong. Yeah. The Persid meteor shower is Earth Sky's, quote, favorite meteor shower. Question. Comet Swift Tuttle was independently discovered in 1862 by Lewis Swift and Horace Parnell Tuttle. How long is Comet Swift Tuttle's orbital period in years? Closest wow. without going over <laughs> will win. How long is the orbital period of the Swift Tuttle comet? We are going to start with uh, Cargill on – or no, we'll start with Brian on this one. Excuse me. So uh, by <clears throat> orbital period, we mean how long till it makes the lap, it comes back. Right? Yes. 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 In years. We're looking for years. 22. Ryan is going to say 22 years. Cargill. Um, I hate this question because I knew the answer. Yeah. And now and the I stole answer's it not from there. You. I just stole it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Swiftly. 400 years. Cargill's going to say 400 years. All right. Let's take a look here. Uh, the comet Swift Tuttle will next be visible in 2,126 because it has an orbit, uh, an orbital period of 133 years. That's a Brian point. Oh! Uh, keep an eye out for that uh, meteor shower, by the way. All right, we have one last uh, news topic here, Cargill. Uh, why don't you pick it for me? Uh, I guess... Uh, maybe we'll go with uh, the road trunk. trunk. Road trunk. Yep, I think that's that's gonna be it. Here we go. Here on New Six, and this is the oh. news. At six. Somebody said, "Jesus Christ, Bryce is young enough; he'll be able to see it." <laughs> oh, I would. I would still be. I would still be pretty old in two thousand one hundred. And- Will you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got to, I, true story, I got to see uh, uh, Halley's Comet when I was 10 years old, mm-hmm. and my goal in life is to live long enough to see it one more time. Oh, wow. That would be, yeah, wow, that, that would be special. So, that, not a lot of people will ever get to do that. All right, Road Trunk. Uh, this is from our friends over at the New York Post. A pack of wild elephants have been on a whirlwind tour. A whirlwind. I wrote whirlwind, and that's definitely not. You, right. you, I, I'm just going to stop you right there. You passed Leave up my pack of pachyderms. Is... <laughs> like, you pack I, of pachyderms was right there. All right, wild pack of elephants are on a world wind tour. A world wind tour. Wind tour. And they are winding their way around China. Raiding, winding their way. <laughs> winding their way around China, yes. uh, raiding, for, raiding farms and buildings for food. A herd of 14 Asian elephants are only 100. Raiding farms. She's like the wind. <laughs> They're, my they're, 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 they're playing. Uh, 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 let's let's get to the question. So they're playing DPS. They're playing DPS when they're raiding the farms. The the herd of fourteen Asian elephants are only one hundred and twenty five miles away from their home at the uh, Zhejiang Bana uh, National Nature Reserve. They've gone for about a year, of and, course, and have trekked three hundred miles. Incredible. Question, the Asian elephant is the largest living land animal in Asia, and it is on the IUCN red list as endangered. In what year was this species listed as endangered? The closest will win. And this is also for but, 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 two points. What? Oh, my goodness. So it's still anybody's game. I'm going to say 1989. Cargo's going to say 1989. Brian. Could you use it? In a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I definitely couldn't can do that in, indeed. In fact, uh, uh, the Asian elephant is the largest land mammal on the Asian continent. Could you spell it? <laughs> sure. Uh, A-S-I-A-N space E-L-E-P-H-A-N-T. Asian elephant. 1990. I say 1990. Oh, He's going to take the over on this one. Now this is what? for. 
This is for two points in the game. The answer we were looking for was 1986. That's a cardio oh. game. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, no animals are har or no animals or humans have been injured in this elephant trek. One elephant who broke away was tranquilized and returned to the reserve, but people are generally okay because of this. But they just have to let the elephants go. They just have to let them do their thing because there's 14 of them. When elephant Tip. was in elephant land, <laughs> let, let my, my elephant, elephant go. go. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so if I lost, then then what? What does he win? Uh, that means C uh, Cargo, congratulations, you're our winner! Yay! Uh, you, you are going to drink. Uh, you are going to get a chance to uh, uh, brainstorm uh, something to put in my Tinder buyer, which I will in fact put, and I'll post screenshots of it. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, yeah. Cargill, can I apply right now to be your right hand man? <laughs> help you make suggestions for. I usually use my left, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I rescind my offer. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, yes, you so, can. We can do this together. I will share my delicious, delicious victory with you, and we together I double can help decide Bryce's triple, and find him the man. Triple the rescind my offer. Wait, wait. Can That's can fine. I can I get in on this too? Can I? You know what? You you could take my place entirely. No. <laughs> I want to do it as a team. Right. I, I say we do it as a team. All right. I, I say accept. I'll use my powers as the winner. Bryce, okay. we are willing to triple team you, but you got to give us details. <laughs> okay, sure. So uh, this is this is my my profile as it is today. The written. Um, God, do I have to read all of this? Somebody, yeah, you do. Hold on. Somebody just wrote it. I, Bryce, know who wrote Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, you win. <laughs> if is it okay if I do? Am I? Is that uncouth in Hollywood for me to do that, Cargill? No, I would. It is. It, it is not. <laughs> well, uh, no, maybe maybe we'll give you all some some brainstorming time while we do our other act. Uh, maybe? Yes. Or anybody? Uh, we've we've got. Uh, a uh, special guest? Oh, yes. uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, you're saying I should set up the other thing. Maybe while we should you give you guys talk. some brain okay. time, right, some brainstorming time. You, while we you do guys our talk. Guest. I've got to go somewhere uh, else. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bryce. Oh. How are you doing? Hey, good. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, well, we uh, uh, while they, while they uh, brainstorm on what should be my Tinder bio, we've got uh, a special guest here in studio. Uh, who who is in fact getting set up uh, right now? You, you, we've we've had him on the show many times. Uh, uh, Cargill, are you aware of of Jomo and or the Possum Posse? Uh, yes, I am. I am very aware of Jomo and the Possum Posse. Well, then uh, I'm 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 happy to announce that we in fact have that Jomo who is joining us on the show. Yay! Today. Woo! There we go. All right. Uh, Joe, why don't you take it away? Does uh, the plug-in work this time? Uh, wait, you know what? We're gonna Thank find out. I'm pretty sure. Who can know? I tried. I tried um, unplugging it, and it and it fails a lot of times. And so I just plugged. I left it plugged in. Sure. I left it working. Hopefully. There we go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. For right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna play a, a song. That uh, we were, I wasn't gonna play it, but we have some people here who know the song and wanted to. Well, they mentioned the song, and so I said, oh, "That's cool. I'll play the song." Uh, this is based on true factual events and science. It should make total sense when I play. Well, I seen it on my news feed. Read it in a magazine, watched it on a TV screen late last night. When they took out old Pablo, they turned his hippos loose and now they're out of control. They're down in the river and giving them folks a fright. It was Paleolithic combat that took out the giant wombat. And what was left, the progress of man. 
But a cannonball and right makes a ripple Don't you blame it on the cocaine hippo He's out there doing the best thing that he can We took out the mammoth and the glip the dawn And any other mammal that we tripped upon Takes a lot of meat to feed a growing brain The giant llamas all went extinct And just like you might have think Now there's a missing link in the middle of the old food chain Yeah, it was Paleolithic combat That took out the giant wombat What was left? The progress of man But a cannonball and right makes a ripple Don't you blame it on the cocaine hippo He's out there doing the best thing that he can <laughs> Well long after the end of the dinos There were woolly mammoths and woolly rhinos And from what I've heard they were all pretty tasty and now a whole bunch of people are kind of annoyed. But the deal is these hippos, they're filling the void. So in my judgment, I'm trying not to be hasty. El Patron had a swimming pool. And nothing makes you seem as cool as when you got your own private Colombian zoo. So if any of y'all just stacking up stacks of cash and you want to make a big old splash, then maybe a cocaine hippo's just the right thing for you. Well, it was Paleolithic combat that took out the giant wombat. And what was left? The progress of man. But a cannonball done right makes a ripple. Don't you blame it on the cocaine hippo. He's out there doing the best thing that he can. Let a rip and get hip and take a tip. Oh, don't blame it on the cocaine hippo. He's out there doing the best thing that he can. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's obvious what it's about, right? Makes sense. I, I read that story. I read that in the news, and then uh, I thought I had, you know, written a, basically the news story back into the song, and then a bunch of people said, what's that song about? You know, at the end of it. I was like, I think I failed. So, uh, yeah. Do I, do I have time to play another one, Bryce? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Similar story, yeah. Soft. <laughs> hey, you come talk to me, cause I've got to know. Have you ever tried to wipe your ass with a post-it note? Hey, baby, come on, talk to me, cause I've just got to know. Have you ever tried just to wiping your ass with a post-it note? It's sharp when you fold it. It's sticky on the back It's way too small to maneuver safely Inside of your crazy egg So come on, baby, now Come on, darling Come on, talk to me I've got to know Have you ever in your life Tried to wipe in your ass With a post-it With a post-it note have you ever in your life tried to wipe your head with a post-it note? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's also, I read that in a news story and thought, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good news story. That's what I try. Just, uh, I'm a mirror for society. Hmm. 
Oh, thanks, man. I read a lot of newspapers. <laughs> I read a lot of lot of newspapers. I also uh, I also uh, have been doing a song a week songwriting challenge for the last year or two years, and uh, I've what I've learned is you write a lot of really terrible songs if you write that many songs, and so uh, I've got a lot of lot of those in the bag, man. So it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Um. All right. What? What? What am I doing, Bryce? Am I? Uh, I am. Yeah, you got a you, you got a bad one in your bad back pocket. I, 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 no, nah, I mean that's. <laughs> the worst. I don't think that makes sense really to do. No, I don't think. I don't think we it makes. We want to hear something really horrible. Okay. Yeah. So, no. so you really give us a good song, and then that can be. And then I could just be like, "That's bad. one of my terrible ones." <laughs> Uh okay I don't no I don't I don't have I don't have any uh let's see I I should have prepared <laughs> um okay I I can play this one I can play uh this isn't this isn't one I wrote this week but it's one I know so that's that's you know something something doable this one's like uh, a lot of people ask me if I could just get kind of like religious on them. You know, so I say, well, I could do it, yeah. A lot of people, like, at bars and stuff, they're like, could, could it get more religious? And I say, sure. Well, God said, here's a garden I filled it up with food and drink and shelter, but don't eat that Granny Smith. Adam said, you know me, Lord, I ain't one of them pervs, but... Could you maybe whip me up a little something with some curves? God said, here's you a woman, and I named her Eve, and she don't know she's naked, so maybe keep that up your sleeve. Snake in the grass, better watch your ass, don't do them dirty deeds. Satan's out there waiting, he's sleeping in the weed. Well, all Eve got to reading about that women's lib And that's pretty progressive for a gal made from a rib And then they got to talking to that evil little viper Took a little bite of that apple lip, oh, they had to pay the piper Snake in the grass, better watch your ass, don't do them dirty deeds Satan's out there waiting, he's sleeping in the weeds so God said, even out of my beg your pardon, but I don't want you once, I want you twice. Now get out of my garden, snake in the grass, better watch your ass, don't do them dirty deeds. Satan is out there waiting, he is sleeping in the weeds. Somebody also pointed out that that's like, the same thing from Billie Jean, you know? I thought I wrote it, you know? Anyway. Epilogue. Well, one night Eve was on Adam like a wired up jumper cable. Nine months down the road, out come old Cain and Abel. Snake in the grass, better watch your ass, don't do them dirty deeds. Satan's out there waiting, he's a sleeping in the weed. I said a snake in the grass, better watch your ass, don't do them dirty deeds. Satan's out there waiting, he's a sleeping in the weed. Yeah, Satan's out there waiting, he's a sleeping in, sleeping in the weed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jomo! Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, Jomo, hang out with us for a bit while we fix uh, the dating career of, of Bryce. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what, what, what exactly was the question? Uh, fr from me, yeah. Uh, 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 I, I need, I need something. I need an above the fold. I need an above the fold line for my Tinder bios. This is the first thing people will see. They'll see my picture. They'll see this line. I, I we, we we had. I thought we had we had I thought we had some pretty good traction with uh, uh, I Bryce know the writer of Doctor Strange. Yes, I love that one. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. 
Uh, I mean, I my first inclination, and this is first draft spitballing. Big heart, bigger schwanz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, we might they, they might put a citation needed on that one. I think it's about average. <laughs> I but. mean, but but I mean, those are the those are the texts you're looking for, right? It, these are the droids you're looking for. I don't know that. What's the rules of that though? Do you want to oversell or undersell? Mm. You know what I mean. I I think. It, I, I don't. I think it it needs to be snappy. It needs to be different. Right? It right. needs to not, be unique. And, and not about your penis necessarily. Uh, probably, uh, wait, uh, like like like. What if he was to go with like, question? Would you rather be the guy or the buffalo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, makes total sense. Yeah. And, right? yeah. and I and I'm kind of versed, so that could kind of okay. work. Can I can I hijack this for like thirty sure. seconds? Sure. Yeah, uh, Jack I, that buffalo. I have to share a story with you. Okay. Um, Joel McHale sent Guy on a Buffalo, the first two videos, to Scott, and they made Scott cry with laughter each time. And while we were on the set of Doctor Strange, he had said, man, I can't believe they didn't make any more videos about that. And I knew that there were two more. And so I waited until we had a really rough day <laughs> where he was just losing it. He was upset. He was having a hard time. I pulled him aside and I said, I got to tell you something. He goes, what? I go, there are two more guys in a buffalo. <laughs> and all of a sudden he's like, show me now. So yeah. <laughs> on the set of Doctor Strange, I have a splitter plugged into my phone and I showed him the last Save two the videos. And then he got in such a great mood. He's like, this oh. day cannot get, this day cannot go wrong now. There are two more guys. And we went, perfect. we had a great day. Oh, perfect. Yay. I, yeah. I have a, I have a similar, like I have. I have everyone always says, "Why don't you make more of that?" And you understand how yeah. move film film works. There's not any more people making that in the '70s, and so I'm like, "Well, <laughs> I've gone through time machine. There's only there's only so many guys on well a you, you understand how time yeah. travel works, yeah. yeah. And yeah. filmmaking and time travel is in your wheelhouse. There's, and there's only so many good scenes you can write a song about. Exactly. But I secretly do have some stuff. I've I've got I've got one like. You know what I'm talking about? I have like, what do you call that? Like a. Is this the like thing a, where you were asking me to adopt a buffalo? I, that's what it's about. I'm going to okay. ask you to adopt. No, I. I have a, I have a, some scenes that I think would would make for like a final episode. I just, you know, I'm like waiting for the day. It should have maybe been the pandemic when the world was just having a shitty day. Yeah. Like, but there's one more. For a year. Well, you, you <laughs> know, it's what? been I, ten I, years. I, I feel like today is as good as day is. Let me go any. edit. Real... I, feel, I feel like we should experience what that joy I, I don't, would I feel like. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, I know. I haven't. I know. I just haven't done it. I've I've put it's, it off for ten years. It's me eating a buffalo burger. It is, uh, <laughs> it is a very sad ending to this story. What about uh, maybe that's the, that's what's in the bio? Bryce knows the, the, the guy on the buffalo, buffalo guy. Uh, what, <laughs> what's being said? What's that? Bon mean? Bonnie is asking how many more patrons we need to actually pay for a buffalo. <laughs> you got to get. I'm thinking you got to get a young buffalo that's not fully mature yet, so you can kind of raise the buffalo right whoa, right whoa 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 they have a word for that they have a phrase grooming for that. it's called grooming <laughs> <laughs> and this is i can this is not night attack. i can play this is no not night part of this <laughs> it's no longer the night attack show so we don't talk about that kind of stuff. yeah we... <laughs> I, I, I do like the i could be your guy or i could be your buffalo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind is of that, that's is that good. one in the new subdivisions the new the animal classification. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. The oh, I'm new... a guy. Oh, I oh, I'm also a guy. Ah, oh, no, sorry. Happy hey, hunting. Uh, uh, Bryce, uh, do you want us to continue to actually figure out what your byline yeah. should be, or I, yes. or or or, or yes, this? I mean, pick one. Like it doesn't matter. I can be a guy. I can be it's, the guy. It's Cargill's I can reward. Be a buffalo. I like that. So I think we're looking past the good opportunity, which is he has to have this on his profile. So yeah. I mean. Whatever we, whatever you want to say, that's power. You know, like he has it, for a full are, are, are screenshot. You drink it's got to be up team? there for a full screenshot. <laughs> it, it it is prime advertising space. Yeah, in, I mean, in, in in utilitarian terms. Think about it. <laughs> I mean, it's it could be. Do you, do you have something in mind, Brian? I mean, all I have is sugar glider. That's that's all all I have. Sugar glider. Okay, I could I could I, be your, your sugar. sugar or I could be your glider. I could be your sugar or I could be your glider. That's pretty good. I mean, I've got it because I went deliberately with the joke opener. I have to give a serious one. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe we're only now meeting. It feels like it's been so long. 
Oh, I like that. I'm writing that down. I can't. Yeah. Only, only. It's almost like they pay me for this. What was it? I can't believe we're only I, just. I can't believe we're only now meeting. It feels I've been waiting so long. Oh, my goodness. That's. Well, there we go. That's how I got my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's ever wondered how the fuck did Cargill end up with a hot woman like that? It stuck with him so long because occasionally I drop those. Yeah. Sugar glider, sugar, sugar glider, 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 all right, well, you're, you're the musician. <laughs> That's how it ends. That's how the song ends. <laughs> I also it's like that other cool verse. It's an 80s song, so it just fades away. It's yeah. Sugar yeah. Glider. You get traffic and weather together on the pie. I like the other verse, which is, Her name is Rio, baby. <laughs> yeah. dances on. All right, way to bust me. <laughs> uh, uh, what did we learn tonight, Cargill? Um, oh, shit. I don't think I learned Jack. Uh, I think we learned... That rice has a big heart, and maybe you shouldn't oversell it. Uh, yeah. Nice. I, I think that Bryce is already full of heart and mind and spirit. Oh gosh, I should hope so. I should hope I have at least one of each of those. And kind. He's great. Thank you. That's very nice of you. I learned. He's that- also great. <laughs> I uh. At- <laughs> Being Bryce, <laughs> you can stop it. It's clearly it pains you. <laughs> I feel like it's the truth. I feel like we all it. know it. <laughs> Who I for Bryce is oh. what I'm trying to say. Yes. Do you love him? Hooray! Hooray for Bryce. <laughs> We're proud of you. <laughs> You've done nothing wrong, Bryce. <laughs> Bryce? His charges are bullshit. Let's just say it. His charges are bullshit, Bryce. Bryce. I'll beat him. We love you, Bryce. Yay. I love you, too. Let's hear it for Bryce. Yay. Fireman Club hopes you have enjoyed this moment. <laughs>